Steve Schultz with Ion Aircraft. We're sitting here in front of your prototype airplane. This is your second trip to Oshkosh. Tell us about this airplane we're sitting in front of. Uh, this air airplane is something that we've been developing uh, entirely around the concept of pilot visibility. It, we wanted it to fit the LSA category, we wanted it to be easy to build, but really the whole thing was about having a giant canopy with a huge field of view, like a motor glider, like any push aircraft that you've ever seen, except even better. This is literally the biggest canopy you can make out of one sheet of plastic. Tell us a little bit about the aerodynamics of this airplane, because it is an unusual configuration. It's unusual looking, but we actually worked very hard in, on keeping the aerodynamics very conventional. It's a regular tail, it's not a canard, it's not three surface, it's nothing like that. The pilot's way out in front of CG, so he's the thing that matters, but the back seater and the cargo and the fuel are all right on CG. So as long as the pilot lives within, right now, 125 to 225, you don't have to change any ballast or anything like that. And it's actually a somewhat traditional tail, even though it doesn't look like it. From a weight and balance point of view and controllability point of view, it's actually a very, very traditional airplane, even though it looks different. So how did you come up with this kind of unique design? The folks behind Ion Aircraft were actually survivors of a project that went bankrupt many years ago. And a few of the aspects of that plane that we never got were that it was a twin boom pusher and so we in, in tandem seating and, and things like that so uh, even though this is a completely clean sheet design it has nothing to do with that previous project we knew that folks enjoyed sort of that that hypothetical aircraft and so we wanted to start with a new plane that hit those highlights but was actually a, a doable project, a workable project. You said you've been working on this project for about eight years. What kinds of issues have you run into and frankly why has it taken so long? It's entirely financial. We, I've got incredibly talented guys, we've got good resources, we've got you know a ton of goodwill out there in the public, we've got lots of guys that like to participate and help out but we're always just crippled by how much we have in terms of financial resources so that's where 90% of the creativity goes. It's 10% figuring out problems on the airplane and 90% how to stretch a dollar farther. So what are you hearing from the people walking by and stopping and looking at your airplane? Wow, you know, you've got traditional aircraft, you've got sort of a high wing tractor airplane, you've got a low wing tractor airplane, another high, another low, you've got rag and tube, and then you've got us, and we just look very different. And for the folks that are attracted to it, they immediately understand what we're doing. They look at it and they intuitively say, oh, this is about having the pilot in front of the wing. This is about having the backseater above the pilot. It's all about the field of view. We don't need to explain it to them. The backseater is actually nine inches above the front seater and the follow the line of the canopy. So the guy in front's low, but the canopy still, still hits him below his ribs. The guy in back, he's way up there and he can look right over the top of the guy in front. It's really a fun field of view from either seat. What engine are you designing it around? Right now we're designing it around the Rotax 912S, liquid cooled. As a pusher, you're really trying to pay a lot of attention to cooling issues and so we've gotten extremely creative with how we cooled the engine but fundamentally it's still a stock Rotax 912S. And tell us a little bit about the flying characteristics. How is it to fly? Does it stall nicely? Those kinds of things. Well I'm completely biased. <laughs> I think it flies wonderfully. Um, it's, it's very docile. Uh, in fact, uh, it stall characteristics. In, in a straight ahead power off situation, it won't stall. It'll just settle. You'll, your, your sink rate can go through the roof. You can peg the needle, but, but it'll still go straight ahead and nothing, nothing happens. You get no stall break. To get a stall break, you've got to really point it up and pull the power off very abruptly, and then you can drop a wing. But if you don't do that, it just settles. As far as everything else, it's very traditional airplane to fly. You get going down the runway, you pull back, you go fly around. It's not like a canard where you've got to do something interesting on landing, you know, it's not a runway hog. You just do a normal flare like an A Cessna and you fly it like any other normal airplane. So Steve, going forward, kind of what are you looking at? And I understand you've got a couple of more prototypes that are going to be in the works very shortly. We have three planes in the pipeline and those are going to guys that we sort of consider beta builders, like beta testing software. One of the challenges we have on our end is we aren't entirely sure what we write if it makes sense to the guys out in the world you know so we write down how to install this bracket well it made sense to us when we wrote it but it might not make sense to you when you read it and so we picked three guys that were pretty confident you know they're experienced builders and they've got the techniques and the patience to know what should be doing and so if we wrote it wrong they're going to call me up and say no that's not right and we can fix the manual and then keep moving so that's kind of where we're at right now is those three in the pipeline and then Hopefully at some point down the road we can actually sell one to an actual human being. And when you sell one to an actual human being, how much will that actual human being have to shell out to have this airplane? 
we are working very, very, very hard to hit the market at around 47, 48,000. Nature is trying to push it above 50, and I'm pushing it back down below 50. So it's kind of a question of who wins, me or nature. Would that be with an engine and avionics? No, we have not been able to standardize anything like that. The old joke about 10 pilots in a room and you get 11 opinions. We gave up a long time ago on trying to standardize that stuff. So it's landing gear, canopy, siege, control system, all the stuff that you need to make an airplane, but you got to cough up your own engine and your own panel. Great, Steve. Well, thanks for taking some time to talk with us on Aero TV. Thank you very much, and I uh, hope that we don't uh, get any more hot weather like we had earlier in the week. <laughs>and beach bonanzas and barrens. Fly with confidence, fly with DFC 90.